Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to the organizers of the conference, Dr. Benalias and Dr. Shroff and the Kalenja Carcinoma Foundation for the opportunity to present uh, at the 2020 Kalenja Carcinoma Annual Conference. Uh, I have been tasked to uh, give updates on the International Kalenja Carcinoma Research Network. I will be doing this on behalf of myself, Dr. Nilo Azad, and the ICRN executive team. The International Kalenja Carcinoma Research Network is an international network of academic and community centers uh, who are tasked to perform translational research important to Kalanja carcinoma. Centers in the U.S. comprise 39 sites, and there's also 31 international cancer centers, making this one of the largest global networks tasked solely to do research in Kalanja carcinoma. Our core mission statement is to rapidly translate scientific discoveries into practice. And this will be done through clinical trials uh, and translation, uh, which is sort of the pit between basic science and achieving ultimate clinical success. Uh, the group here is highly motivated to adhere to this mission statement. I'll start off by going over the impact that the network has had over the last year, and then I'll follow this up with plans for uh, the <laughs> remainder of this year and beyond. So <laughs> in the last year, we worked on further bolstering the infrastructure of this network. A uh, business plan was finalized uh, in 2019 and the early part of 2020. Uh, this included a number of legal documents, including confidentiality agreements, material transfer agreements, memorandums of understanding, and any publication agreements for work arising out of the work done by this network. The membership composition is shown here. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, quite heavy in the oncologist arena, and this would be all types of oncologists, medical, surgical, and radiation, uh, growing number of basic scientists. And we have started getting some representation from hepatology and interventional radiology, and we'd like to see this grow as well, given that they are key members of multidisciplinary teams that help take care of these patients. The research network has been organized into working groups. Uh, the working groups I'll show later encompass uh, areas such as surgery, transplantation, uh, genomics, uh, big data, immunotherapy, and other emerging areas. So we'll start with activities in the surgery and transplantation group. Uh, a number of initiatives have started and are well underway. Others are in more nascent phases and others are still in planning. I'd like to highlight a few here. Uh, a pilot study is being conducted across a number of centers, evaluating gemcitabine, abraxane, and cisplatin, uh, what we call the GAP regimen, for patients who have resectable but high-risk intrahepatic telangiocarcinoma. This effort is being led by Dr. Shishir Maithal from Emory University. And just the amount of time that this was, got up and running is astounding. Uh, I, I give kudos to Dr. Maithal and his uh, colleagues who uh, work tirelessly to make sure this happened. Uh, there are also efforts underway to look at uh, outcomes uh, using SEER and NCDB databases. And uh, finally, there's a number of collaborations developing organoids, which will be model systems that investigators uh, across the network and even outside of the network will hopefully be able to use. Uh, and these are in collaboration with uh, biotechnology and diagnostic partners such as Sengen and Tempus. Uh, the surgery and transplant group is also uh, <clears throat> planning a cancer session at the HPB conference. 
They had a symposium at the HPBA annual meeting, and they are working on operative guidelines for cancer surgery. Moving on to the next group, uh, this is both a diagnostic and therapeutic group in the radiation arena, radio diagnostic and radiation oncology. Uh, this group has also been very active. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Eugene Coy and his colleagues have done a number of very impressive uh, efforts here. So a few that we can highlight would be uh, retrospective analyses of patients with intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma treated with radiation, uh, to get ideas of treatment patterns and, and outcomes. Uh, a lot of this type of work is being done with uh, Komodo, which is a big data company, uh, and there are efforts to explore utilization of various local regional therapies, such as uh, TACE, um, radioembolization, and again, this is being done in intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, they are also pursuing educational activities uh, at their ASTRO annual meeting. A key to success for uh, many of the groups is to have a, an excellent uh, biorepository. And now with uh, genomics being a key part of these activities, you can think of these activities comprising genotype phenotype. Uh, Dr. Lewis Roberts from Mayo Clinic Rochester should be uh, particularly recognized for having led these efforts for a long time and, and successfully uh, so. So in this realm, uh, clinical database uh, in the form of a REDCap database has been developed. Uh, GWAS study is underway. Uh, there are collaborations with our colleagues in Asia to develop um, model systems. Uh, the first few trials have been uh, opened up uh, in the ACRU network, uh, and these are being led by Emerging investigators, uh, the two here are the Olaparib study uh, in homologous repair deficiency uh, patients being led by Dr. Daniel Ahn, and a study looking at FGFR and IDH1 inhibitors combined with gemcitabine and cisplatin after initial therapy has been started uh, as a pilot study being led by Dr. Shubham Pant from MD Anderson. Uh, I'd also like to recognize Dr. Milin Javli, uh, Dr. Laura Goff, and Dr. Lipika Goyal, who have been providing uh, tremendous mentoring to uh, the, the various emerging investigators in this group uh, to conduct this work. An immuno-oncology working group has been amazingly active. Uh, they've started and completed a study with atezolizumab and cobimetinib uh, led by Dr. Nilo Azad. This was done through the NCI cooperative groups and was actually one of the, the most rapidly accruing studies uh, in recent times. Uh, additional funding was garnered uh, <clears throat> through peer-reviewed grant mechanisms, and hopefully that trend will continue. And finally, a multi-institutional project on an international scale is being planned to do immune profiling of cholangiocarcinoma akin to uh, what has been done on the targeted therapy front. This uh, research network has been very active in terms of engaging with industry. Uh, this is particularly important as a uh, large bulk of the drug development uh, lies uh, with our partners in industry and collaborative efforts are extremely critical to make sure that basic science findings that are promising are ultimately uh, translated and hopefully become uh, routine clinical care. Uh, you can see a number of companies uh, listed here who are part of the industry council. Uh, a number of efforts have been undertaken here, such as a companion diagnostic project, uh, patient registry, and looking at um, incidence prevalence and other risk factors demographically. Using the resources available, uh, both in terms of uh, human resources and uh, monetary resources, it's been important to uh, leverage these resources to garner additional uh, resources from peer-reviewed bodies, typically federal funding, 
I uh, just want to highlight here that a DOD grant, which is a multi-investigator effort uh, from PIs from the ICRN team, was successfully garnered uh, in the past year uh, in the amount of about $1.4 million. Uh, there are also uh, efforts that help support uh, the, the patient registries that I discussed earlier. Uh, number of events uh, have been uh, part of the efforts of this group, uh, including this conference where uh, many of the investigators involved in the network uh, are speakers or, or moderators. Uh, we have had uh, Asia Pacific conferences uh, for three years thus far. We were hoping to have a fourth conference, but this has been uh, postponed at this time due to the COVID pandemic. We had a cholangiocarcinoma summit in Phoenix uh, in, in the last year, and there have been a number of regional symposiums. Uh, we anticipate that these efforts will continue and that more and more of you in the cholangiocarcinoma community will uh, help lead and participate in these efforts. Now I'll go over the goals for uh, 2020. Uh, in the Surgery and transplant group, we hope to complete the trial that I mentioned. Uh, we also hope to go in a new direction, which would be to start evaluating uh, targeted therapies in the neoadjuvant setting. Uh, more to come on this front uh, in, in the next year. And longer term projects are efforts that I highlighted where organoid models will be developed and characterized. Uh, here is one of those organoid, effort, organoid efforts, which is uh, with our partnership with Tempest. And uh, as you can see, these uh, may be more representative of patient tumors than uh, cell lines that have been established for a long time in the laboratory. Uh, key thing would be to characterize um, these models. Uh, we know that this is a very heterogeneous disease. And uh, these could be then tested with various concepts, whether it's single agents or combinations. And those that look promising can then be advanced to the clinic. Uh, this could also be applied uh, for a patient selection uh, type of hypothesis where you uh, generate individual organoids in patients in real time and treat them based on uh, what might work best. So these are the clinical correlations that I just mentioned to you. Uh, and I hope these uh, efforts are successful as we proceed through with them. Uh, moving on to the radio diagnostic and radiation oncology group. Um, I mentioned the projects that are being done with uh, Komodo. Uh, and most of these projects are with regards to outcomes and big data. Uh, a larger, a longer term project will be to uh, do a multi-institutional uh, radiation therapy prospective trial. Um, and uh, we'll look forward to the leaders and members of this group to um, develop these concepts further. The biorepository and genomics group will uh, work towards the goal of achieving a thousand patients. Uh, multinational collaborations uh, will be further developed and strengthened. Um, the patient registry data that I mentioned will hopefully be interfaced with this. Uh, this will uh, dive into a genomics project uh, along the genotype phenotype uh, realm. And uh, this data can hopefully be then used for uh, communications with uh, regulatory agencies and determining what the natural history of patients would have been in the absence of targeted therapies. Uh, and as always, we uh, always welcome uh, new ideas and, and concepts. Uh, an effort was underway for some time to develop a platform uh, termed Batch between the uh, US cooperative group shown here, the ICRN and the Kalanja Carcinoma Foundation. Dr. Laura Goff from uh, ECOG was helping spearhead these efforts. Uh, given that there are some competing efforts in the uh, NCI-NIH system. Uh, it was felt that 
the, these efforts should still proceed and, and they will probably make their way back into NCI uh, as combinations. But for the time being, uh, we will try to uh, develop these efforts through our available networks, which are precog and accrue. Uh, a key facet of these efforts is that uh, this will serve as a way for newer emerging investigators uh, to work with senior investigators in the group, uh, gain mentorship, develop concepts, and um, move ahead with career development, all while uh, hopefully leading to better patient outcomes. I uh, want to highlight a partnership between Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation and Citizen, which is a big data company. Uh, this is a very novel concept that turns research on its head where patients take control of their data and pull it together uh, to really drive research forward in real time and hopefully in a much faster fashion. Uh, the data is um, protected in all manners necessary in terms of de-identification and organized in a way where meaning can be derived from it when uh, assembling uh, the big data elements together. Uh, access would uh, be granted on uh, a basis that would allow for uh, analysis, but also ensure uh, protection of patient privacy. Uh, you can see that some efforts are already going undergoing here, which can help start giving us an idea. Where are patients receiving treatment? Where are they being diagnosed? Um, what is the frequency in various regions? And these are questions that we have had a very difficult time uh, answering in the past with available tools. So again, there's just a plethora of research opportunities. I encourage anyone who's interested to please reach out to uh, contacts in the foundation or in ICRN, and we'd be uh, delighted to try to help in any way to uh, facilitate your research concepts. Uh, the natural history work that I mentioned uh, uh, here is some work shown by Dr. Hallebeck and Dr. Goyal uh, that has been presented in various forums. This is very important uh, given that FGFR therapies are making their way through uh, definitive trials and uh, already pemigatinib has uh, become FDA approved on an accelerated fashion. So here the objective has been to uh, understand the natural history of the disease and whether uh, responses to FGFR inhibitors are different than responses to other agents uh, that may have been used in the past. So you can see a number of centers have participated in this effort, uh, distributed uh, uh, across the world, uh, primarily in US and Europe. And uh, patients who have FGF altered cancer are younger, more likely to be women. An interesting feature is a higher incidence of bone metastasis than we're used to seeing. Uh, plans from the immuno oncology group. Uh, a large effort is being planned uh, across multiple institutions to look at three-dimensional multiplexing of 35 different immune markers uh, developed by the, the Nolan lab. Uh, this will, again, uh, hopefully start characterizing the disease from an immunophenotype standpoint, um, akin to what has been done in targeted therapies. I already mentioned a fair amount about the Natural History Initiative. Um, this is a multi-institutional multi effort uh, using the, the databases that I mentioned along with um, uh, the genomic databases, uh, tying with the outcomes databases. Uh, Dr. Milan Javli and Dr. Lipika Goyal have been uh, particularly instrumental in these efforts. Uh, you can see uh, the participating institutions thus far. Uh, there may be a need uh, to add to this list to make it more robust. And the project infrastructure uses a, a REDCap database, uh, and there will be the 
typical data transfer agreements uh, that will help sharing of the data between the various institutions. Uh, the goal is ambitious, a thousand patients with 40% uh, of them having genomic information. And uh, you can see that um, this would finish sometime by the end of 2021. I uh, want to highlight a, a few last things here. Uh, in the research network, we have initiated a translational science seminar series. Uh, the hope is that this will uh, bring together even more closely than before um, the clinical investigators and the basic scientists so that we can achieve the rapid translation goal uh, that we've set out as our primary mission. Uh, Dr. Nilo Azad is leading this effort, and she has already uh, lined up Dr. Greg Lisinski uh, as the inaugural speaker. Dr. Lisinski, of course, needs very little introduction in that he's a uh, internationally acclaimed cancer immunologist. Uh, the first seminar series talk is scheduled to be in August, so please stay tuned. Um, Last but not least, I would like to uh, give a tremendous thank you to Dr. Milan Javli, uh, who had served as our as the chair of our network uh, since its founding. Uh, he is co-founder and chair emeritus of uh, ICRN. Uh, he has, of course, uh, not <laughs> stayed idle. He has taken on chair duties at the NCI Hepatobiliary Cancer Task Force. Uh, without Dr. Javli's uh, engagement, uh, enthusiasm, hard work, uh, dedication, and uh, selflessness, uh, there is no way that ICRN would be where it is today. So again, a deep gratitude to Dr. Javli for all his work. Uh, I will stop there, leave some time for questions and answers. Uh, I hope that gave you uh, a glimpse of what we are doing in ICRN uh, the work is far from done. Uh, we would definitely uh, want anyone interested uh, uh, in any way to reach out to us uh, and not hesitate. We are particularly interested in hearing from uh, newer and emerging investigators. So thank you for your attention, and I would be delighted to uh, go over any questions and answers. Thank you.